Hey guys, Nick here, and today we will be seeing the results of Pete joining the Wolf Army, and what it will lead into to Alexandra, and the fate of Rick and his people as they continue to search for Sophia, and we will see actual results, and a further hint as to Sophia's whereabouts to Rick's group in this episode as well. This is part 16 to What If Sophia Joined Negan. Now we're going to cut straight into the chase of the wolves invading Alexandra, because last time we cut off right after Pete joined the wolf army and told him about Alexandria. So the attack would go as planned, just with Pete in tow telling them more about Alexandria. Well, more that they actually care about. Smash into the clock tower, and now we're going to get into who dies. First up is David. I would have put him earlier, but there were other people, so I didn't really... I just felt that him dying here would be good enough. Not really much of a character in this show, anyway. T-Dog, unfortunately, would be the next one to fall. Bob would get surrounded... Not only by wolves, but walkers too, in a similar fashion to how he was in season four when they were out on the run and everything at the prison. Now, Melton runs into wolves himself, but even though we've seen him take a beating from the governor, he does take a similar beating this time, way later in the story, but Eugene toughens up much earlier than any version of him, because Milton is, he's so close in personality and everything to Eugene. He's like a brother. So to see him almost die to these folks, he would actually toughen up and protect Milton and succeed. Lily, being around, is also in danger, but she's luckily in one of the houses because... I don't see her being out fighting or anything. I'd feel she'd be in one of the houses. Martinez steps up because remember, they're a thing and not her and the governor, you know? So, yeah. Anyways, Martinez steps up and guards the house from wolves or walkers to protect Lily and Megan because she's around here too. Anyways, next part... Not too much to talk about. We get Morgan fighting the wolves, letting them go, and everything else. And then we get the whole thing with Owen, which would play out the same exact way. Not too much to really change anything here. Now, I bet you're wondering why I haven't brought up Pete yet. Because he's part of the wolf army, and this is my first story where I've had him live past his original death. It's because, unlike everybody else who's just killing to kill... Pete has an agenda. Well, Owen sort of did too with Morgan, more or less, but Pete has his own agenda. Joining the wolves was just his way to get back at Alexandra. He didn't do it out of the goodness of his heart or anything. He is going to pay his family a visit to either one, get them to leave with him, or two, hold them at a hostage point to show that he's going to get his revenge against Carol and Deanna for going along with kicking him out. And going after his family could be the best chance of doing that. But, sadly, that plan doesn't last too long. Because soon enough, Pete, having just joined the Wolves, doesn't have too much of a disguise other than the W. Mika sees him firsthand. Carol disguises herself as one of the wolves, so this catches Pete off guard because, you know, he's going to have a lot of... Pete wasn't, like, he was half smart, half dumb, so he's not going to know that this is Carol in disguise, but Mika being there is enough of a distraction, too much thoughts going through his mind. And with all that, Carol silently and quickly kills Pete. It might feel like a bit redundant that I had him join the wolves just to kill him in the next episode, but let's be honest here, even in the comments, let's all just accept the fact that Pete, this is the best that he was going to get, because I honestly do not see him really amounting to much, living past this point, really. So this is 
best I could really do for him. Afterwards, Carol makes sure that Meek is okay, and obviously Pete didn't really get around to getting Jesse, Sam, and Ron, so they're okay. But she then spots something that definitely surprises her. Ron was around, having been attacked by the wolf that he was originally, and Carl saved him and everything. He saw what Carol did to Pete, because remember, Pete didn't really have a disguise other than the W, so this was plain as day. So, seeing this, Ron immediately, once Carol takes sight of him, points his gun straight at Carol. But, if you think that either Carol wouldn't fight back here, or that Ron would actually kill Carol, think again. Even though the kill will be happening a bit sooner than when Ron tried to kill Rick, it's still noted that no part of Ron would succeed in whoever he killed. Same with my him almost killing Daryl in my What If Rick Spared Shane remit. Mika puts him down and even gets praise from Carol for this. Because even though she's confident she could have just killed him, it was still nice to have backup in the form of Mika. Especially with the bond that they've had. Now, Heath... Glenn, Nicholas, and all of them, Michonne, all that. That whole group segment plays out similarly to how it did originally, so there's not too much to go off of for a change, except for one big thing. No Glenn fake dying dumpster scene thing, because Aiden is still around, which means that I feel that he would sacrifice himself instead of Nicholas which in turn would give Glenn and Nicholas the chance to escape. Now, as I'm sure that Nicholas would also want to sacrifice himself, I feel that just one of them doing this would be enough, since Aiden's still alive. It's hard to say, because, you know, never happened. Anyways, Rick, Lori, and Shane are out on their own and get encountered by the wolves that Morgan let go. But considering the fact that it's three people instead of just Rick this time, it's much easier. And I feel that the van would not get shot up. And even if it did, it's not really too much of a big deal because we have Rick, Laurie, and Shane. Rick and Shane more than Laurie. <laughs> but anyways, then we cut to Morgan telling his backstory of meeting Eastman and getting the stick and changing his ways. And he tries to change Owen who we then see locked up and everything else. So that segment would remain unchanged as well. Now, the next thing is Glenn meeting up with Enid. But this time, he has Nicholas in tow. So this would either work to benefit them, or it would just make things worse for Enid to want to come along because there's an extra person. But like I said, it would honestly kind of help in the regard because... Glenn would probably use Nicholas being there, or even Nicholas would want to help Enid to come back. It's honestly hard to say. Either way, not too much a big change here besides Nicholas being there. Really isn't. Then we get to something I've discussed in stories before. Reg still being alive takes Deanna's death getting bit. So, yeah, this is where Deanna would start to change. She had already trusted the group way more than enough, but now she's like, she's a different person. We all knew what happened after she lost Reg. Meanwhile, we get a scene with Tyrese, Abraham, Sasha, Beth, Merle, and Daryl, and their first encounter with the Saviors, and that whole scene with them driving off trying to lead the Horde away. Except... We have Merle, Beth, and Tyrese in tow. Now, instead of Daryl and Merle getting split off to meet Dwight, Tina, and Sherry, Beth is in tow, because I've had Daryl and Merle meet them in a few of my stories, but he, this time, if I haven't done it already, Beth is around as well, which means it's three on three. Now... The encounter with Dwight, Sherry, and Tina goes as you would expect, but like I've discussed before, this time more in detail, right before Dwight is about to attack or shoot or whatever, Merle points his gun and stops the whole thing. And 
says that killing Daryl probably isn't the best move because it doesn't matter if they kill him. They still got him and Beth to deal with. So three on three, even. And then he asked Daryl if he should just put all of them down, considering what trouble they've given them. And Daryl says no, because from what he's sensing, and just for good measure, if these people know the rumored group that Sophia might be a part of, they could probably go and find her. It, it, granted, it was just a rumor that Aaron and Deanna and them heard, but it could still help. Once Dwight hears this, he perks up. He wasn't expecting them to know about Sophia. Because, remember, D Dwight Sherry, and Sherry Tina, by this point, knew about the saviors. And then he says that he knows who they're talking about. Daryl then points his crossbow so fast that nobody could even have time to blink. We all know how defensive Daryl was of certain people, especially when Dwight brought up Denise, you know, after he killed her at the whole season seven and season seven thing. Anyway, Daryl points his crossbow so fast no one has time to blink because these FP who wasn't expecting Dwight or anybody to know about Sophia. He, w he was just taking an educated guess. And then he tells Dwight to talk. Dwight simply says, knowing not really another way out of this, he says that the group that Sophia is a part of, because she's actually with them, they had some trouble with them just a while back and managed to get away. But Sophia is part of that group and is apparently the right hand. They call themselves the Saviors. They take what they want and make it seem like they're saving people, but really, it's just a it's just a load of nonsense. However, the saviors are on a different playing field because of Sophia being in tow. And he even states that it's not as bad as he honestly thought it was then. And how the original Dwight would think it, but of course he's not going to say that because we're not parallel dimensions here. Merle and Beth say that the best thing to do now that they have this information is to just wait and not go in firsthand because they could get them all killed. And Dwight, Sherry, and Tina agree to help because rather than Daryl being there alone and not seeming that genuine and just threatening them, they seem genuine about getting Sophia back. So they're going to help. And with that... Tina also survives because we didn't have the whole running in the woods thing, so she would live here. And with that, we finally have the big hint to finding Sophia. But that doesn't last long, because little Timmy and his brigade, after everyone reunites, encounter them on the road. Now, with Daryl having the information that he does, as well as the rest of the group here at least, about Sophia being a part of the Saviors, now that... It's finally coming to Rick's group full circle. How will this go into actually encountering Sophia? Do you think that even if they do find her and go sneakily like they did originally, that they'll be able to find her and bring her back? Or do you think that Sophia is so far gone into loving Negan as an adoptive father that she won't want to come back? And with that big cliffhanger... This is where we're going to be leaving things for the moment. Truly hope that you guys enjoyed this episode and are enjoying What If Sophia Joined Negan as a whole. It's definitely getting a lot more interesting now that we're finally getting into Rick's group finding out about Sophia. Because now it's not just a rumor. They know now that Sophia is part of that group. And sure, there were some context clues, but you can't blame them for being skeptical for having to look for Sophia this long. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless. Like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.